Welcome to the Grateful American series, an interactive multimedia program designed to restore enthusiasm in American history for kids and adults too. Creator of this series is David Bruce Smith, an author and publisher here in Washington, D.C. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, your co-host, founder of Incandescent Public Relations and Incandescent TV. American sculptor Ivan Schwartz is a painter and inventor who has always been interested in what lies in his peripheral vision. That is incredibly clear when you're here in his fantastic Brooklyn studio, Studio EIS, which stands for Elliot, his brother, and Ivan Schwartz. And they also work with their sister Deborah. We're going to talk all about that today on the Grateful American TV show. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, your co-host, here with David Bruce Smith, founder of the Grateful American Foundation. Thank you so much for having us, Ivan. It's a pleasure. Welcome. So how did you get involved in being a sculptor and having studio ice? I had a traditional training, a classical training in sculpture. I had a great teacher who thought I should become the next great figurative sculptor. And I went off to Italy, as my teachers did, uh, and wound up working in an area of Italy where sculptors have been working in the laboratory of sculpture production for the past 500 years. I spent a year there, and then I came back to the United States, and within a year or two, I found my first commission, which really was the beginning of Studio Ice in 1976, now almost 40 years ago. And I think it was about 1981 that we had our first really big commission, and I thought I would both be, I would become wealthy, since it was such a large thing, which of course didn't happen. Um, but we were in business. So Elliot is an artist, you're an artist, and your sister Deborah also works here in the yes. studio. Yes. How does that work together, that family dynamic? Have you just raised the bar for all families to be able to do this? It works with great diplomatic skill at the heart of every single day, which is how we have managed to do this together for almost 40 years. I think it works because we simply trust each other, absolutely. There simply is no question of trust, and there is a great division of labor. What was the longest running project? The National Constitution Center in Philadelphia is the largest project of its type um, and the longest running project that we ever worked on. Two and a half years roughly on one project, 42 life-size bronze sculptures of the signers of the U.S. Constitution, which by the way came at an amazing moment because we used to have a studio not far from here with a full view of the World Trade Center. And we were at work on that project when the towers went down in 2001. And there were an awful lot of people who came to the studio for work. And I know that that work gave them great solace working on this project for the Constitution Center in that moment. Of the hundreds of projects you've done, what is your favorite and why? Well, maybe the singular figure that I love most of all is the Lincoln on the steps of the New York Historical Society. I just think it's a very beautiful piece and it's very evocative. Um, and I love the idea of Lincoln in, in New York. Um, great stories aside from, you know, the making of that sculpture, uh, but even here in Brooklyn. So I, I love that piece. So Ivan, for people, who want to be sculptors. Mm. What is your advice? It, you, you really have to think about what you're getting into. You see, when you're very young, I mean, you're just full of ambition and the thrill and um, the challenge. You travel the world, you go and ingest everything that makes you excited about what you're doing. But then, you know, 20 years and 30 years later, you have to live by your wits and you have to live by the product of your endeavor. We've managed to do that, but it's the rate of attrition for people who study art and then who give it up because they can't make it. It's huge. So that's a bore. That's the boring response. That's the real world response. But the real answer is you have to be willing to get stuck into it. You have to be willing to fail. Um, and if need be, you have to be willing to change what you do because it may or may not work. It's probably true for everyone and everything. Sure. Artists sure. especially though. Sure. So our last question for you is clearly you've hit the pinnacle of your career or what appears to be to us. What lies ahead for you? 
Um, it's, this is a great watershed moment, so I can't actually think what lies way ahead. The stat, let's see, the Statue of Liberty has been done. <laughs> um, it would be great to have a challenge at that scale. Um, but we have an enormous amount of work in front of us right now uh, for great American institutions. Um, and we're very excited about all, all of these projects. And, and it rep all of that work represents almost three years into the future. So this really is a great moment for us. Thank you so much for having us at your studio, Ivan. This has been fantastic. Uh, it's been my pleasure. This is a great day for us. And please come back to Brooklyn. You are watching The Grateful American TV Show. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, your co-host here with David Bruce Smith, founder of the Grateful American Foundation. We're looking forward to restoring enthusiasm in American history for kids and adults. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for being with us. You are watching The Grateful American TV Show, a video production of David Bruce Smith's Grateful American Foundation. Watch more episodes at www gratefulamericantv.com and follow our TV show, radio show, monthly newsletter, and upcoming books at our website, www.gratefulamericanfoundation.com. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, your co-host. On behalf of David Bruce Smith and myself, we look forward to restoring enthusiasm in American history for you and your kids. We'll talk to you soon.